Hello and welcome again to my channel. Today we're chatting with Lani, my special guest, and she's going to tell you everything about the challenges of life. Or well, very nice at some stages, but very sad also. And so you have to watch the whole video to get a gist of it. Lani, over to you. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a 52-year-old mom of a 15-year-old child. So I'm at the moment in the throes of gender and mental and all sorts of diversities, aside from the fact that I'm dealing with a raging teen. So we're just going to chat a bit today about uh, a bit about single motherhood and um, the world that's out there and around us. Okay, so fire away, Lani. Just whatever comes to your mind, whatever comes to heart, let us hear it. Yeah, I'd say that um, it's really been a journey in the last um, year and a half here in Cape Town since landing um, to find a space for my child where they could be happy, nurtured, supported. Um, beautiful city. Um, things work really well here. There are many, many choices of how you could live, how you could go to school. We've tried quite a bit of it, um, but it uh, has been very tricky as well because my child has been online school since COVID and we had traveled a lot and finding a settled place in Cape Town in terms of school and support network um, has been slightly challenging. Um, at the moment, I'm struggling quite a bit with um, the, shall I say, the medical world, <laughs> the choices that are out there for, for counseling and for diagnosis and uh, all these things that, um, yeah, it's a very strict system. It's a very hierarchical system. Um, I've tried therapist, I've tried psych clinical psychologist, currently social worker and now it's getting to the we need to go to the psychiatrist route. I mean aside from for somebody not on medical aid, aside from the costs that these people charge to see them for very very short time frames with quite a cold and snobbish attitude. They don't try to get your business. They don't try to, there's no warmth. It's, it's actually a very cold experience I'm having. Um, and the only reason that you'd go to them is for this diagnosis, which then can lead to drugs. And the more I read about this, nobody can keep up with how, whether it is genetic and through the food I can see eating and the GMO food, whatever the reason or the blame you want to place. The point is, the drug pharmaceutical world couldn't keep up with how their brains were changing. And yet, the Gen Zs, with their online world, are all affecting each other all over the world because now there are no borders. And they are all pathologizing. And it's very, very fashionable. Everyone has to be ill. Yes, um, these kids live in a, in a, in a fast changing world. Um, technology is driving everything. Um, since COVID, the kids live online. They, they, so many don't have friendships. So I know there's a whole world of normal people out there, but that's not the world that I've been moving in. It's been from Little Learning Hub to Little Learning Hub all over the city and even trying a very different school, very, very expensive different school. That didn't work out and you just sometimes hands in the hair, where do you go? What is the right thing to do? Um, the psychologists and psychiatrists are all so busy. You have to wait months and months to actually get an appointment. And yeah, it's, there's no quick fix, there's no real answer. That is what um, I find very challenging. One of the other challenges, Lani, is financials. How do you manage? I think you said you have very cute ways of getting extra money. Well, yeah, we've, we've, um, I looked at this thing and I left the corporate world about 10 years ago already. So I've been living differently. I was way ahead of the curve with online work because I've been a freelance writer for 10 years. Um, did some work for the Indian government, business to business work, basically just on LinkedIn, getting connections. And that's always helped me through. Um, and then after COVID, um, I was like, 
okay, well, why don't we just leave the city? I need help. I need, to, I need a community. In terms of, at the time, I thought, <laughs> you know, when the child just becomes a teenager, you think, oh, you know, you need a father figure and farmers are father figures and um, I need to get my child out there again in social situations. So I joined an international movement that's actually for young people called Work Away, where you can go volunteer. And I sold my car in Joburg and we took a bus and we volunteered for about eight months um, all over in the Eastern Cape, working with the Mother World Township communities and helping overseas kids who are backpackers to, you know, come give back here in Africa. Then um, my child was a bit overwhelmed with the very social nature of this. So I said, okay, cool, let's go do farms because it's quieter and it's permaculture and you'll learn skills and you'll get to do some physical work because the kids tend to sit in front of their computers all day. That was wonderful. Um, it was hard. <laughs> it was very hard work. It was winter. We were in the snow. We were. Um, we learned to basically prune olive orchards, um, all sorts of things, vines, apple trees, pear trees, um, citrus. Um, we learned to do so many different things um, because you're also working with the food and you um, le le learned many skills but then felt like they wanted to see to them. So I said, no, no problem. Joined another um, thing called uh, Trusted House Sitters where people, tra I found out, I mean, my, my mind has been so open about the very different ways you can live. You don't have to do the typical system and live with the fears of this world and the pyramid and you have to do a full-time job and you have to buy a house and a car. I've been without a car for three years. I very happily built and the rest of the time I walk. There are buses, there are safe trains in certain areas. You just learn and you get around. And I still have, now I have a corporate job and I'm all, you know. <laughs> okay, tell me more about this house sitting. Okay. So basically, um, you, there are people who travel the world this way, so if they want to go to another place, they actually, instead of going to live in a hotel or in a and b and not knowing what it's like, um, they can go stay in somebody's house, so it's very homely, and it's generally because they're going to go stay in somebody's house in a strange country or a strange city, the neighbours are all very, very kind because um, they know that you're sitting for their friend, a neighbor. Um, and so you get taken up in communities. Um, because I have a child and because of the online school and sort of work and needing a bit of structure, I always looked for longer term ones and we were very, very lucky. When we got to Cape Town, we had, um, we ended up for a year and a half, actually staying in the same home with two Labradors. Um, every three months, the owner would come back um, you know, just to see the house because that's the kind of person they were or are and it gave us a chance then to have a bit of freedom we'd go to fly to Joburg, go visit the family, go see my sister on the Lesotho farm at the time we went to the other grannies in KZN so it was our little every three months holiday and um, yeah we still do it on and off we've been able to go live everywhere in Cape Town we spent six weeks in Musenberg earlier this year uh, now rented for a while here in Rondebosch and now we're going to do another two month house sit shortly in a few days in Woodstock for an artist and so we see all these beautiful wonderful different areas um, ways of living and the rentals in while house sitting well that's the whole thing because if you're house sitting okay it's not paid house sitting because it's not a job for me I've got a job um, it is rent free <laughs> so for two months again I save because um with the, uh, the psychology and psychiatric treatments and that for my child it is expensive so that's one wise way of um, yeah, not having to have an expense on a home um, yeah just got to be clever with money <laughs> okay we just want to say thank you so much Lani for sharing that with us and thank you for watching this video please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet we will have more chats with Lani about <laughs> other topics as well she's a freelance journalist so she's got a lot to tell us. Thank you so much, Lani. Thank you, Fuzia, for having me. <laughs>